there is an activity type within Moodle that is called H5P. It's a relative new kid on the block and it's become very, very popular very, very quickly. It allows a teacher to create different levels of interactivity quite quickly and easily, but they work well on mobile devices. Most of them are reasonably accessible and they work really nicely within Moodle. Now the quiz activity within H5P is nowhere near as powerful as the quiz activity within Moodle, but it, it is to a certain extent more visually attractive. For some people it's easier to create, but its real benefit is the fact that I can embed it into other items. Now I often use the book tool within Moodle for kind of content, so text, images, links to videos and that sort of stuff. But what I used to have to do was link out of the book into the quiz and then kind of link back into the book and then back to a quiz and it became a little bit disjointed. What I can now do is if I use the H5P activities, I can actually embed them into the book so it all appears seamlessly as one item. So here's my book and then just for reference below are some of the activities that I will be using. But if I just show you what it looks like, when you go into the book, here I've got a a page at the start and it's just got a single line of text. When I move on to the next page, I then have some more text and then immediately after that and as part of the page, I've then got the embedded quiz. Now what I've done here is I've downloaded one of the example quizzes from the HP site just for speed. And this is a three question quiz so I can just use my arrows to go forward to go through it. But the key thing here is the fact that this is embedded into the book. And then on the next page, I've actually got the same quiz again, but it's been done in a different way. So how do we do this? Now, first of all, it will depend on which type of H5P you have. If I just go to the add an activity or resource and I type H5P in here, there are two different ways in which this might work and it will depend what you have on your Moodle as to what we do. If you have an older version of Moodle, then you might have had H5P added as a plugin, in which case it will appear in the list as interactive content. However, in newer versions of Moodle, H5P has now become core and it appears actually, and it's called H5P. So depending on what you have, will determine how this works. Now I've got I've got both on mine, so I can demonstrate both. So in my first one, I've created or I've, I've uploaded that H5P activity using the old third party plugin. And when I go into the activity, having created it, you will see it gives me an embed button. And it will then give me some embed code, which I can copy. I then just have to go into my book. I'm just going to add a page at the end. And you'd put your text in whatever other text you want. And then when you want to embed your activity, you go to the HTML button, which is the open and close brackets. And we then just paste. And we update. And if I save changes, you'll see how it looks. And you'll see here, it automatically resizes to the full width of the page. If I just shrink my screen a bit, you'll see that it will automatically shrink. So it's still full width as I shrink the screen. Uh, so it's quite nice like that. I will now do the same with the other one. It's a very similar process, but I'll come back to why there's a difference in a moment. So if I go into my second one, so this is one that's been created using the core H5P activity. So I'll click on that to go into it. And again, I use the embed code. Now it's slightly different code. Copy that. Go back into my book. And I'll just, I'll just put, put it straight in. I don't need to put any text around it. And it does just that. Now, if you are using the first technique, because you, you're using the third party plugin, 
if I just look at the embed code that's been added, what it basically does is iframe and then source equals and it gives the web address of the activity that you're embedding. And the key thing there is it's got, in this case, it's a four digit number, but basically each ID, each activity within your Moodle will have a unique number. And this one is number 1539. So in the future, if I wanted to, I could just copy that and then I could just paste that same bit of code but just change the number to a new number. So I'm just going to open up a new tab because what I've got here is I've got another uh, H5P that's been added with the old technique. And when I hover over it at the bottom of the page, the URL tells me it's 1540 or if I click on it, it will tell me it's 1540. So what I can actually do is I can just manually change the number and update it. And what it will do is it will then just simply change the activity to the type that you like. Now, what we've noticed here is it's put a horizontal scroll bar in. Now, sometimes it will do this and sometimes it won't. And the reason it's doing it is because it's resizing to the full size of the screen, but then these blocks on the right hand side are kind of resizing again. But because the H5P does it first, it then is then wrong effectively. So if that happens, what we have to do is we have to change the HTML code very slightly. So I'm going to go back into here. Now, the, the, the way that this works, this bit of code here that says script is basically the JavaScript that gets it to automatically resize. So I'm going to take that out because that's what's causing the problem. But I've then got to specify what width I want. Now, at the moment, it says the width is 1314. I'm going to change that to 100%. So what will happen is it will resize to 100% of the size of the container. And it then doesn't matter what the blocks do, because if the blocks rechange size, this will then also adjust to be 100%. Now, we do have to specify a height, but we can't do it as a percentage. It has to be an absolute height, so it has to be an actual number. And it's a bit of trial and error. So I'm going to stick with the 810 that I've started with. And I'm going to save changes. And you can see now that it's gone the full width, but it hasn't cropped the right hand side. I've lost the right hand sort of scroll bar. And then this little bit of blue space at the bottom, this is kind of like your dead space. But you might need that because if you view things on different size screens, and this text then starts to wrap, it will start to push down. So you always want to have some blue space at the bottom. You don't want it to be too tight up, but you don't want it to be loads. So you might have to adjust that number slightly uh, to what you want. So, and, and if you have the same with the other way of embedding the code, so if I just go back to the cog there. So this is if you've used the core uh, activity type, it, the code is a bit more complicated, but you've still got the same things in there. You've got the script at the end that you just delete. You've got your width there, which you would again change to 100%. And then your height, which you would either leave as it is or change if you need to once you've tested it. So it's the same principle for both of the styles. What you can't do with the uh, kind of the core plugin is you can't just um, change the number of the activity like you can with the other one because the embed code is different for each activity. So you have got to go and grab the embed code from each item. Now, the beauty of embedding the activities is the activities themselves have their individual tracking and it doesn't matter whether the user accesses them via inside the book or they access them directly. It will track uh, both methods. So if you're using this as part of your course completion, in this case, they're showing up on the right hand side, it doesn't matter whether they've completed them in here or they've completed them directly. And what I sometimes do is I might actually set this so that you only see it from within the book. So all I have to do is change the common module settings so it's make available but not shown on the course page. That way, the only way they'll see it is when they are in the book. They won't see it directly, um, but it is still there and it is still tracked. And then finally, once you have embedded the activities into your course or into other items, you can actually turn the embed button off so it doesn't actually show up um, 
to stop people from bedding it elsewhere um, within the course or within the site and it just makes it a bit tidier so this embed and reuse button if I want to get rid of those I can just edit settings and in the old type you just have to untick the box that says display action bar and frame that in doing so will take out the embed button so even though you've taken it out it will still embed but it just means you can't find the find the code directly and with the core ones so that's the middle one here i've got three separate options once i've embedded it I can then remove the embed button just to make it a bit tidier. It's one of the best ways of making the learning more seamless is to integrate the capabilities that H5P has and all the different interactivities, put it in with the learning materials so that they just work their way through, whether it's a book or a lesson or a long page or whatever it is that you're using. Um, it's certainly a lot better than bouncing around like I had to do previously. I'm Dave Ford. If you wish to get in touch, then please look at my contact details on the screen. I'm based in the UK, but I work with organisations all over the globe, providing consultancy, training and resource development services, mainly in the areas of Moodle and Tatara.